Hi, this is Stacey Chalemi from The Advisor, and today I'm very excited. We have a very special guest today, and his name is Michael Rebus, and he is a transition coach, and he is an he has, he's just phenomenal. That's all I could say. He's just phenomenal. He has such great information to share with us. And he's going to talk to us today about what he does. And he's going to teach us some great things. But before we go on, I just want to mention that I am giving away my book, Empower Yourself. Don't let your conditions empower you. And you can find this on coachstacychilemi.com slash free book. And you can get it today if you go on my website. And so now I'd like to continue with Michael. So Michael, why don't you tell us a little about yourself and what you do? Well, hello, Stacey. First, thank you so much for having me today and congratulations on that book and sharing that wonderful message with the world. You know, so many people need that right now. And it's, it's so good to see you, you know, bringing that out and putting it out in the world. Thank so, you. So you're very welcome. So for me, again, my name is Michael and I call myself transition coach, um, which the way I look at it is I, I meet people where they are. And some people are looking to get that next level, whether it's finances, that next level in their career, that, you know, that executive level, you know, that corner office, or they may be looking, you know, from college to their career, or perhaps they're a bit older and they're looking to what, you know, transition out of being a, a work, you know, person, wherever it might be into what's next. So helping them find that. It's just something I've been very passionate about. You know, you were telling me before that we began, you were just telling me a great, I loved how you brought, when you were explaining yourself, you mentioned about Indianapolis and that's why that's your logo when you go onto your website and explain to me how you, cause you said you're from Indianapolis. So talk to me a little about your past and how you got from square one to now, because I think the audience will find that very interesting. Oh yeah, thanks. Um, Stacy, yeah, my logo it does have a checkered flag on it, exceed transition coaching. And it's interesting that the checkered flags on one side, then there's a green arrow that kind of points around and up. But um, in my previous life, I was in um, automobile racing, professional automobile racing. So I've been very fortunate. I've worked on cars that have won the Indianapolis 500, uh, the 12 hours of Sebring. I've worked with drivers who drive in NASCAR. Um, 20 years just been with some great, great people, some extremely very high performing people. Uh, for the first 15 years, I was a mechanic. I was a pit crew. So very much hands on, very much attached to the car, very much in the thick of it. And then the last you know, six years, I, I did public relations. So I was with the driver everywhere except for in the car. So I got to experience quite a bit of it and really meet some neat people. And again, meet some very, very successful, very high performing individuals. And um, along the way, people would often come to me for some advice or for, for a pick me up. Occasionally yeah. I meet people and within the first 10 minutes, they're telling me their deepest, darkest stuff. And so they'd always say, Oh, that was so good. And, you know, Michael, you should be a coach. Michael, you should be a coach. Michael, you should. Be. And I, I've heard this for years and years and years. And so yeah. finally I went into it and, you know, I became a coach and uh, it's been an interesting journey, you know, where we start, where we enter and where we end up are so amazing. You know, it's such an amazing, you know, to talk about the journey. It is true. It's, it's a bit of a, you know, we have our ideas where we're going and then there's what happens and uh, getting able to get comfortable with, here's what I think I'm doing, but here's what's happening and not get too much resistance built up to it. It's been a, that's been my journey, but it's also what now I've been really to help people to walk through that transition with a little bit more intentionality and a little bit more ease. Now, can you tell us the techniques you use? Because, you know, a transition can be very difficult for some because some people, they fear failure and they, they are scared of change. And like I mentioned, one of the reasons is because of the fear of failure and also because who am I going to transition to? If I make all these changes, I might not like this new person that I transition to. You know, maybe, you know, maybe I shouldn't do it. And then they self-doubt themselves and they think about the worst of the worst. And then they go into negativity. You know, what's the worst that could happen? And once you focus on negativity, that just pulls you back. That just, you know, that's a, a jawbreaker. It just sucks you right back in to square one all over again. You don't get off that, that you know, the first Monopoly square before you roll the dice. So- <laughs> 
you know, tell, you know, explain to me how you, you know, help people, you know, transition. Cause I'm assuming if they, if they're coming to you and they want transition, they've gotten to that point where they, they want to take that chance. But for many, they think about it, but they don't do it because of those reasons. So maybe you could give a little advice first to the people who think about transition, they'd like to change, but they have so many things in the back of their head, just stirring around like a pot, you know, just going round and round and round. And, you know, how do we get to that next point? Those are all fabulous points. You know, everything you said, you made some great points about it all. So as you mentioned, now, some people, you know, obviously when I find them, they're usually ready to make that transition it's already you know in progress and they're feeling lost or some people i get that you know the the very rigid planners and they're five years out you know and, yeah. and they're already and i love those people because now we have some runway but then i also love the people that just find themselves in the middle of it it's like i need help so um so that's a key thing like that i find it, it's a universal truth but it works well in this practice it's first just accept where you are like it or not you have to accept where you are because if you're resisting where you are, then you, 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 it's, I call it like, it's kind of like being on, you know, wherever you're standing, you have to accept that's where you're standing right now, because if you're not, you're falling down, there's nothing to stand on. So accept where you are and then accept whatever you're feeling about it. You know, if you resist the fact, you know, or get angry at yourself for not knowing or get angry at yourself because you're afraid or get angry at yourself because you've tried something that didn't work out exactly how it wanted to the first oh. time. Right. All these things are just, quite frankly, just kind of, you know, undermining your very, where you stand in the world, but also, you know, they're robbing your energy. And as you were just mentioning, they begin to close down your ability to see a future that suits or begins to, you know, satisfy or even, you know, bring joy into you. So to first just accept, you know, what's going on. And in transition, especially if we look around career, so many of us now, our career and what we do, we have a lot of identity wrapped up in that. And that is not necessarily the healthiest, the healthiest thing. You know, from the time we were a child, what do you want to do when you grow up? What a terrible thing to say to a child. Right. You know, I, I, you know, I like, you know, from Forrest Gump, aren't I just going to be me? You know, yes, that's mm -hmm. exactly who you're going to be. Or John Lennon, I'm just going to be, want to be happy. Right. And the people, you don't understand the question and go, so, well, I don't think you understand life. So yeah. to really accept people and then also just help people kind of find their why, you know, why now, why is this important? And just right. start having a conversation, right. And not it can be overwhelming. If we have to look at this whole big thing, let's just kind of get into some of your thoughts. So we accept where we are, but why is this important now? You know, what might you want to do? You know, what, what might that look like if you were just to take, you know, one just one swing at it, you know, what would be the first one? Knowing full well that that just might be a check swing. That might just be a practice run. Yeah. This might be a data point. So I just work them through a process. And uh, it's interesting, and I mentioned I used to do PR. And if you're writing a story or explaining an event, you know, it's kind of where, when, you know, what, who, you know, why. Mm -hmm. And so it's a sort of right. same thing, right? You know, it's like, you know, how, you know, how is this, how is you being all worried about this right now? Say, so how is that impacting you? Right. And so, you know, and then sometimes I'll even get to, okay, well now what's going on in your body right now? When you're feeling it, say, oh, it's like, oh, my stomach, I've got this. Oh, what, what's going on there? You know, how, how long have you had? When's the first time you felt that? And right. really slowly, you know, the, the proverbial onion peeling away and just kind of take people through a process. And it's, you know, it has to be, for some people, they're just ready and they're, they're, Quite frankly, they not many boundaries, and so they're just. But a lot of people, we tend to have we have protections in place, we have guards in place, and so there's you and I, you know, establishing that rapport, just being safe within our own space, you know. Right. So there, it, it's so nuanced and so deep, but mostly just acknowledge and accept where you are right now, and, and if you can, give yourself some some you know some gratitude, some grace. You know, can be even be a little bit proud of yourself. Be happy. You know, I've come so far. I've done so much. I might yeah. be this next part out. I think sometimes people have to learn how to love themselves. I think that's like the next step of acceptance. I think you know, it's just learning. Okay, I accept who I am. All right, great. You accept who you are. Now, how do we go about loving that person that we accept? 
How do you feel about that? I think that is probably the, you know, the most commonly not faced, not acknowledged work out there. We all have so much, again, kind of going around our, our identity, you know, um, early in life, you know, right away, wait, you know, you, we're, we're good. Oh, you're a good boy. You're a good girl. You do something, you know, maybe you do something wrong. You make a mess, right? You spill your, your Cheerios all over the, the floor. Oh, you're now a bad girl. You know, I've spilled my Cheerios. I, you know, I, I'm still figuring this little body out. You know, I got excited. But you're yeah. so, and we take this on it. It lands identity. We have these little meaning makers. And when we're very young, we don't have the perspective to realize the, the people don't know the power they're wielding when they use language. We don't realize it. Mom or dad is completely overwhelmed with their own stuff, trying to pay bills, deal with their boss, their relationship, their broken down car, you know, their broken heart. And so they throw some of that at us and we just catch it all. So yeah. our society in particular, you know, we are, we're very material and label and it's, it's necessary. You know, we have to create language to communicate, but then that also, it very much limits, you know, like I don't, one of my movies that I really like is Finding Neverland and, and Jay and Barry's like, oh, it's just a dog. What do you mean? That's just a dog. What a terrible thing to say. You know, yeah. dog is an amazing thing. It does so many amazing things for so many people. So, but to start loving yourself for some people, you know, all have to kind of get to that and they get all kinds of resistance. That's super uncomfortable. Yeah. Okay? Really, really uncomfortable. And um, a, a lot of times people will talk just, just mindset stuff, but if, when you get to a thing and there's something heavy, generally you're not feeling it in your mind. You're feeling it somewhere in your body. Yes, very true. And our bodies, it's its interesting. I'm very fortunate that my girlfriend just finished up a four-year master's in Chinese medicine. Mm. So, you know, she's going through it and I'm having to help her practice. And, you know, the study and I'm doing there, West meets East and there's a lot of cool parallels in the emerging thing, but our body's never wrong. Yeah. Our body is never wrong. Never now, our wrong. brain and our, our mind are easily fooled, but you will not fool your body. And so right. if you're some deep thing in your the pit of your stomach around a topic, or if your heart hurts around a topic, there's treasure right there. Let's, right. let's, let's go on there and just begin and just start. Part of us want to repress that. We want yeah. to have a drink, you know, hit the pipe, go get a medicine, go distract ourselves and bury ourselves in work. And those are high, just, they're just coping. Some of it's high level coping, some of it's low level coping. Mm -hmm. You know, to a certain degree, we reward that. Oh, I'm just so busy. I'm such a worker. Go, 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 get, 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 get. And, and in our society, you know, the U.S. especially, we reward that. It's okay. Your your life right. might be scrambles, but you're doing great things in the business. Right. And it's not, it's, you know, women are fortunate. You know, you guys are allowed to have feelings. You're sometimes ridiculed for them. Guys, especially, you know, I'm a bit older. It's changing slowly. But for a long time, guys weren't allowed to have feelings. Guys yeah. weren't allowed to have emotions. And yet we're supposed to go out and function and be healthy, but that's, so there's so much there individually, but then systemically. And we often want to take full ownership, responsibility, accountability, blame for a lot of things that we're just a systemic outcome. Now we do have power, but well, first we have to, oh, I'm in the system right now. You know, if you're in a big crowded place of angry people, you know, you're in that and you have to realize who put up what I needed and decide if you want to stay or go. You know, if you're in something else, but but then like, what's my part here? You know, some people you can change in the middle of the storm. Sometimes you have to weather the storm and get to a calm place and get safe and dry and then do some work, you know? Yeah. So it's, it's big stuff. It really is. But that self-love is so, so key for all of us. And myself included, it's been a huge journey. Yeah. You know, I, I find too, I find a lot of times when I speak to clients, a lot of stuff roots back to our childhood and how we were raised. And like you said, words are so powerful. And I don't think a lot of people realize how powerful words can be and how much of an impact words could be. And even the actions of an individual, how it, it molds us, you know, 
like just like a little puppy. If you get a puppy from when they're first born, if you show that puppy lots of love and you give it a lot of attention, you'll that puppy will turn into a, a beautiful loving dog. And the same thing goes for human beings. If you know, we love sometimes our children and we love, you know, the people around us, but sometimes we we tend to we lack that gratitude, like you mentioned, and we don't give we, we sometimes take advantage of, you know, the people around us and, you know, the words we sometimes say because of the frustrations we have in our personal life, you know, or the actions we may take kind of sometimes can leave a huge impact on a person the rest of their lives. And, you know, people don't realize that, but, you know, childhood experiences and childhood drama can actually, you know, turn a person from what they could have been into this other person that they don't want to be. Oh, that's so true. That? It's so true. There's so much emerging science, like, you know, decades worth of science that is, it's not anecdotal. It is proven out. There's so many great books. A lot of things as you're speaking right there, you know, um, right now, a uh, Gabor Mate has been a great voice for that. And, um, his book, the myth of normal, he, you know, when he looks at things specifically or for him, a lot is around addiction. And a lot of people are like, why the addiction? But he says, well, why the pain? Yes. What, so what's everything? He talks about it from his own experiences that he had early in his life and how they inform even now him as a, a man in his 70s who's been doing this work forever, who still falls into a cycle or a pattern yeah. that way. Or, um, and then also uh, Vessel and you know, the body keeps score, that same thing. And there's a thing in there you mentioned, um, you said childhood experiences. Well, there was a study done in San Diego, Kaiser Permanente, by a, a doctor whose name I don't recall, but adverse childhood experiences. And over mm -hmm. 20 years, just anybody who came to the ER, they were interviewing these people and they would treat their elbow, they treat their arm, they treat their, their flu, whatever, but they would yeah. just ask what's going on in your life. And they got a lot of great data and how many people have adverse childhood experiences, which basically just comes down to some sort of emotional or physical abuse. Yes. And the more of that you have, you know, in your life and by who, and then if it's repeated, if it's chronic, you know, that informs tremendously how you're going to come out. And uh, as you mentioned, even language, and as you said that too, another great, great source for really beginning to understand, uh, you know, Brene Brown is doing a lot of great work. You mentioned, you know, puppy. If early on we're given, you know, you spill your Cheerios, Oh, that's okay. I spill my coffee sometimes too. We can clean that up and get you some new Cheerios. That's okay. You know, let's just try to pay more attention next time. Okay. You know, I, mm -hmm. you're, you're still the best girl and I still love you versus what are you doing? You dumbass? That's it. No breakfast for you. <laughs> right. And and they're both. I mean, I would, unfortunately probably the, that this latter one's happening more often. And so then that we have, um, you get some guilt around that and yeah. you know, guilt, Guilt's not my favorite thing. And there's so many things systemically too. I mean, most of our, you know, our school, our academic thing, we reward one thing, we guilt another. You go right in accepting, I'm going to be an A or I'm going to be an F. The idea yeah. of sending small children to something where they're saying there's a good chance some of you are going to fail. I don't want to send my kid there. If, right. if that was possible, get my car fixed. And they said, oh, there's a chance it might not work, but you know, here's 2000 bucks. No, I want a place that they're going to fix it. So yeah. it's really, so it's very systemic. And then there's even some of our, you know, our big spiritual or, or religious organizations have built in guilt and guilt is a way to manipulate people. It's not a way to empower people. Exactly. But at least guilt is based on a behavior. If people, it, it really goes wrong early on, especially and they get shame. Shame is identity again, but we are based on identity. Who do you want to be when you grow up? I want to right. be this. Or you, let's say you want to be a lawyer, but you, you know, you, you fail out of thing or you can't pass the bar. Now there is, there's shame in that because you didn't, you know, so, and we do the worst things to ourselves and the worst things to each other from shame. Shame is just, it's horrific to, to feel yes. and it's horrific to, to release, you know? Yes. So it's, and again, there's a lot of this is systemic and we always want to blame the individual because it's convenient because mm -hmm. it, it, it stops us from looking in the mirror Ourselves. or in what we're contributing to, you know, as me, as a U.S. citizen, it's not comfortable, but I pay taxes. And so I am helping some police do a great job. Some police, you know, abuse their power. You know, yes. some judges doing a great job. Some judges, you know, just feeding a, a prison system that is for profit. Right. 
you know, so, um, so I have to say, I'm, I'm complicit in that. I don't agree with it all of it, but I don't, you know, I can't figure out how to escape this system or go and create my own yet. And even if you try to do that, it, the system tries to pull you back in. So yeah, right. it's so, so heavy, but it's, we're having these conversations, you know, one of the, well, I'm sure there's more than one, but this pandemic we had a few years ago, mental and emotional health are now okay to talk about. Even five years ago, we'll say, say seven years ago, we, we, you know, you can just say, oh, I'm feeling really anxious or I'm feeling, been feeling depressed. Right. You know, now, you know, big pharma was making money off of it, but it was hush, 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 you know, mm -hmm. but now we're allowed to say, well, I'm not, I'm not really feeling And mental health is now in the conversation and it really needs to be because after that, you know, you mentioned childhood trauma just as a whole, yeah. really and all the modern world just had a, a huge trauma with that pandemic, with the loss of the assumptive world. For all of us, that was our first big shutdown, our first big pandemic. Yes. And we went from being safe to be moving around, safe to be seen, safe to go whatever, to now having to go through some certain things or you wasn't safe for you, right. or you could possibly be a threat to other people. And that's, that really weighs on people. So there's so much going on. So now just to get back to us, accept how we feel, accept our response, don't make it wrong. Don't make it bad. And just a reference place. You know, I want to move more, you know, to what's more optimal and ideal for me. Right. And, you know, one of the things that I was thinking about when you were explaining all this is that, you know, when we were talking about childhood drama and we were talking about how things affect us is that, you know, 70% of our society comes from a dysfunctional family. And dysfunctionalism causes stress. And, and also one of the main causes for illness is stress. So we are by not taking, not look, not transitioning and not improving ourselves to be the better self, to be our true potential. We are actually destroying not only ourselves, but we're also harming the people around us too. So we're by, you know, so it really, people have to really, you know, focus on themselves and look at themselves honestly. Honesty is the key. And really look at ourselves, look at our, our strengths, but yet look at our flaws and try to improve them so we don't affect others in a, and in a negative way. Because what we do can affect someone more than people even realize. How we, how we express ourselves verbally, how we display ourselves, our actions, everything all around, you know, is, is having an effect on ourselves. And it's having an effect on the people around us who we love and care about. How do you feel about that? Oh, it's absolutely true. And it's um, it's so interesting to think about that, you know, how we how we manage whatever's going on within us. You know, in a really a, a simple thing, and it's even this has changed dramatically, but you know, growing up, you know, generally if we have to sneeze, you know, we'll we'll cover our mouth or not sneeze at somebody, right? Because yeah. mm -hmm. we don't want to. You know, a lot happens in the sneeze or, you know, if we perhaps, you know, ate something, you know, for, for breakfast, it's a little bit bubbly. We won't excuse ourselves from the room. Right. There's now, and we're seeing more and more in, in the media, you know, thanks to these wonderful gifts of having, you know, cameras on the site. We see these people unloading all their, their own hurt, yeah. all their own inner turmoil and directing at, and like making this one person totally to blame for all of it, which is, it's, it's not reasonable whatsoever in that moment, no. they don't have the ability to reason, but to, so again, that to first again, just accept where you are, but learn, you know, it's so it's interesting because, you know, it's not necessarily been around, but we have to teach, you know, from early on that, you know, it's okay to feel mm -hmm. it's okay to be angry. You know, it's okay to be hurt. It's okay to be happy. But it's not always acceptable to share everything with your feeling with somebody who isn't prepared for it or maybe isn't quite there. So there's some there's some, you know, awareness and some custom or courtesy. And we are not really given that even we're you know, just we talk about words to have a vocabulary, you know, Mom, I'm I'm feeling, you know, really uncertain about going to school today this first day of school I, i'm really, really uh, you know i'm not sure i'm i even have a bit of a stomach ache you know yeah. just suck it up and go to school well now you've just been told none of that matters 
and you just have to go do, you know, so we, we, we believe that. Whereas yeah. if we support that, oh, that's perfectly natural. I felt the same way. I'm sure everyone feels that way too. So let's hear, let's, you know, let's do, let's take a couple deep breaths. Let's think of the, you know, remember when you went to the last grade and you were so worried in that first day, you found your new friend and you had that new teacher and what, and get them into a different state. Yes. And like, oh, yeah. And so allow for the possibility that it's okay to feel apprehensive and there's a good chance that it's going to turn out okay. Yeah. So to make it safe to have both, to realize right. you need, we don't talk about it enough in my mind, but there's polarity. You have to have both. These days it's all, you know, mindset, more positive, more positive, more positive. Yes, it's great to be positive, but try and put a battery in something and just connect the positive. Yeah. It's not work. You need a negative. We need right. clarity. So it's like, yes, you know, you're, you know, you would go to school today and yeah, it's going to be uncomfortable. You might not find your class. You might not like where your locker is. There might be a teacher that you don't like, but there's going to be a lot of really good stuff too. Yeah. So let's look for the good stuff and let's be ready to just give the bad stuff just what it needs and nothing more. Like you mentioned about where, you know, where if we, if we focus all on that, on that stuff that we don't like then we don't have the energy or the time or the capacity to give to the things that we do. Yeah. So but to begin to learn that we have the ability to, to change or, you know, even these days too, so often, and I especially see it in, in young people today, they're on their phone and they're, they're hunched over and they're like this. And when you are like this, that's actually the body's in a physiological protective state. That's how your body interprets that. When you're standing up here and you're looking up and you're looking up, that's open and that changes your mental state. The tail does wag the dog. So helping yeah. children, you know, through through play, through connection, through movement, through joy, to express, to be, you know, a child on its own, they'll be happy. They'll be happy. They'll get upset. They'll cry. They'll be happy again and just allow it to be. But, you know, with adults, we um, try to bottle stuff up and then you get these people that are chronically angry and they're just, you know, they come to a room and it just like tank the energy and, and you don't want to be there. And, you know, and so it's really interesting I like to think if we all looked ourselves like we were an instrument, like a musical instrument, and remember that we have to tune ourselves. Yeah. And then if, you know, um, and then we have to be willing, like if you and I right now, you know, kind of be attuned to each other. Right. Yeah. And not necessarily raising a vibration or lowering a tune. You know, if you hit a, a any note on a any instrument, doing and then ding. The higher note isn't necessarily better. It just it just hits differently. You know, the low note's not necessarily a bad note. The bass isn't a terrible instrument because it plays low notes. <laughs> it just plays the low notes, you know. But they're all in tune at the beginning. If you see an orchestra, I believe it's the oboe plays the note and the whole orchestra tunes up and they play songs. And they may not even be playing the same note a lot of the time. Sometimes it's a fifth or it's a third, but that's what makes it rich. That brings yes. the diversity and the beauty. So there's so much there, but really just learning first, just accept you. And it's the hardest thing to do. Yes. <laughs> now, can you give us before we go a few tips on people who have trouble accepting themselves? Maybe we can give them some tips on how they could start learning to accept themselves so they can start moving forward. That's a great question. One of the things I like to do with people is ask them to do a little, create a little highlight reel for themselves. You know, what were three things in your life that were so much fun or you were proud of yourself? You know, the first time you, maybe the first time you got up on your, your ice skates, you know, the first time, you know, you, you know, you won that spelling bee in the third grade, you know, when, um, when you know, you got to, you asked the girl out for the date, you know, when you got the job, you know, when you won the race, you know, when you got the promotion, when you made the cake and it came out perfectly, you know, whatever it is, just even the smallest things, but just think about all the wonderful things and how you felt in that moment. Right. Bring the feeling, really bring and think about, you know, how, how are you, how, how is the, you know, the sound of that? You know, how did, how are you speaking? And when you went to go share, Oh, you know, you know, Stacy, I have to tell you, I'm just so excited. But then really just bring all that because we'll we'll often overfocus in on the doom and the gloom and the sad and, and we'll embody all that. So just yeah. practice, play your highlight reel, 
get it, you know, as much as you can. Feel it. If there's a smell, if there's a taste, if there's a sound, stand in it. Yeah. And then you put your hand in your heart and just love that you were able to do all that. You experienced all that. You had that gift. You gave of yourself and you received. And then from that moment, how would this version of me do today? How would right. this version of me advise me to move through this struggle? Right. Is that, that version of you get stuff done and loves doing it? Yeah. So, and so really just getting in, it's just not a mindset thing. I'm asking you to embody, to use every sense you have in your body. Right. This body is rich with strength and ability and wisdom and knowledge and connection. And all those things are really powerful. So um, yes, a mind is a wonderful thing, but our body has so, so much to offer. And so really get it on board and start living with it and through it. I like that a lot. And one question that popped in my head before we go is when we talk about the body, understanding the body and when the body signals us, maybe through pain or through whatever it may be, how do we understand those signals? Like how do we dig deep into ourselves so we could start understanding what our body is trying to message in us? That is a really great, great question. Um, maybe it's probably been four years. And it dawned on me one day that at first our body whispers. Mm -hmm. Hey, Stacy, got a little, little something here. And then, then it talks. And then if we don't do something about it, and th then it yells. And, and, and then, it, it you know, it's really yelled. And if you don't listen long enough, you're on your back and you're in an ambulance going to the hospital, right? So it, there's a progression. So if we can learn to listen to the first whisper, whatever it is, you know, sometimes the first whisper, I, um, I should probably go get a massage. Right. Or, you know what, I scheduled way too much stuff today, and I notice that I'm carrying more tension than usual. This is new. So what, mm -hmm. what, what's going on here? You know, maybe a massage, you know, maybe, maybe you know, maybe it's a doctor. Maybe, maybe just you need to go outside and, and stretch. You know, maybe I should, you know, take a walk, you know, have I drink enough water today? Just be curious and be open and listen. And again, don't override. Don't make it wrong. Don't mm -hmm. shame yourself for having needs. Don't guilt yourself. You know, don't make everyone else first and then get to you very last when there's nothing left for you or, you know, in you. But just, mm -hmm. just listen and just make it okay. It's okay to have needs. For some people, that's, it's not. For yeah. some people, it's not okay to have needs. For some people, it's not okay to have feelings. For some people, yeah. it's not, it's not okay to say, I need help. Right. So be aware of that. Don't, again, shame it. It's like, oh, this is me uncomfortable. What's that one person? Hey, you know, I've been really having this thing right here. What do you think that is? Or who should I go to? And, you know, again, you know, your healthcare provider, if you have, you know, a, a, a you know, a doctor or somebody that, the key thing is that you really feel safe with. Any yeah. person you deal with, doctor, dentist, you know, workout coach, you know, yoga instructor, any kind of coach, whatever, you should feel safe to share, to be seen, to speak, to have needs, to say yes, to say no. That's key. And, and know that you are allowed to have something. You have agency. You have, may not be able to control the world or have power over it, but you do deserve to have power, control of what occurs in this skin, in, in the immediate vicinity. That's your right. That's your birthright. Very true. And one more thing is that I think someday I see so many mothers, especially I see a lot of people, they are pleasers and they don't, the last person they take care of and the last person they please are themselves and they tend to suffer and they, you know, usually it's emotionally inwardly and you could see it through their actions or you could even see it when people are under a lot of stress, you'll see them age start to quit quickly and you'll see changes physically in their body because of the stress that they're enduring inside and the emotions that they're, they're enduring. And I, I talk about self-love a lot. And sometimes I feel like I, I hop on it to people, but I think it's so important. And I don't think enough of people give themselves enough of self-love. How do you feel about that? It's so true. And there's a lot, a lot, a lot of people, you mentioned mothers, it's just kind of natural. And again, it's, we're conditioned into it, but I always like to, hopefully by now, most people have been on an airplane and cabin pressure loss, oxygen mess drops, put yours on first. 
Mm-hmm. You really can't help anybody until you take care of yourself. So there's yes. one good common like no one resists. No way am I putting my, you know, we won't resist that. Right. Like, oh yeah, I've heard that. It does make sense. If you're not having, if you're not breathing, your ability to make any kind of thought or action is severely, you know, hampered. So, so it's very counterintuitive in that that pleasing. It's you know that's actually it's it's a low grade sympathetic response. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's we didn't get into it, but there's you know we have our we have a parasympathetic nerve system when things are going well we're rest and digest social connection creativity you know we can look around we can speak measure tones you know our eyes are doing thing our body's burning fuel the way it should if we feel threatened we'll slip into a, a sympathetic right and a low grade of that can be that sort of friend and befriend or pleasing or fawning to make mm-hmm. the other person so you feel safe and you can work your way towards connection and so to be become aware of that is super important. But yeah, to really, I tell people, if you take care of yourself first, then everything else gets the best of you. Yes. If you don't, then everything else just gets the rest. Yeah. So do you want to give the best to the people you love, to your work that you care so much about, or do you want to give the rest? And so yeah. when we make ourselves, and this is again, very deep, very deep. A lot of things people are taught to put something else outside of them first. We are the vessel. We are the conduit of things that come through us. If we care yes. for that vessel, if we care for that conduit, then whatever comes through, it comes through pure, comes through clean. There's no leak. There's no loss. You know, you can yeah. hold more to give more. You can hold more to receive more. Right. Have to take care of the vessel first. Yes. I like that. I like that analogy. That's wonderful. Now tell people a little about your coaching services and where they can find more information about you. Well, all the usual spots there on the LinkedIn, the Instagram, you know, Facebook. I I do have a website. It's not the greatest website. I don't focus a lot of energy there, but you can find those. And uh, I coach people primarily it's around career transition. So maybe you're, you know, out of college going into a career. Maybe you've been at the manager level, but you're trying to get to that that senior VP or that C-suit level. Perhaps you've been in, you know, you've been working now for like, you know, last 40 years and, and now you're ready to begin to see what's next. And so yeah. I, I coach people through those things, or sometimes I coach people, you know, that are in a rough spot in their relationship. So there's a transition from a bumpy, you know, I'll have a client's meetings, like they're, they're looking hard, like, you know, divorce might be it. And so yeah. I might you know, coach them through that. So really just meet people where they are. I will share you just for all of you, often what you will admit is the issue is just what you're comfortable sharing and, and looking at yourself. And there's going to be more in there, but it's perfect. You know, the first step is just to say, hey, I need help. So those are my main focuses. Um, I'm sure that, you know, there'll be some some sort of links with it. And you could, uh, you know, find me on, like, say, any of the the socials. And I have that little link tree that has all my stuff, uh, ways to book, ways to look into. And, uh, you know, um, if you'd like to reach out, absolutely feel free to. So thank you so much. It's been a pleasure, Michael. This has been a wealth of information and I I appreciate you coming on. And this is definitely a topic I think everybody can relate to in some way, fashion or form, you know, and I, I, I thank you, you know, you've been a a wonderful guest today and you've provided such, such great information. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much, Stacey. I appreciate it. You have a wonderful day. You as well.